autumn is prime time for mushroom foraging and right now it is peak season when it comes to hunting for fungi in British Columbia. Elements Adventure Company in Vernon has been offering introductory mushroom tours for those looking to get into the hobby. We spoke with one of the mushroom elements experts on some of the tips and tricks when it comes to foraging for mushrooms. The main goal of the mushroom tours is to teach people about all the different characteristics that mushrooms can have. Uh, so a lot of people might just look at a mushroom and see uh, you know, the color, the shape, but they won't think to check about well, what kind of a spore producing structure does it have, what kind of, um, what kind of staining properties does it have, what kind of smells do it have, or even taste on some, some species. So I, I want people to walk away with um, a new way to explore mushrooms. First of all, something that a lot of people don't know about mushrooms is that they are just the fruit of a larger fungal organism that's underneath our feet, all underground. So it's just like when you pick an apple from an apple tree, you aren't, aren't harming it, um, you're just picking the fruit. And some would even say when you pick this mushroom, you're helping it to distribute its spores wherever you take it. Um, but that being said, Sustainability and respect is something that I teach on all my tours about not taking more than you need. But if you're harvesting mushrooms for food, it's a good idea to cut them off just above the soil surface so that as much of the mycelium can stay intact. Mycelium is the roots of the mushrooms. So yeah, definitely leaving uh, a lot there is a great idea. And just for other people that might come by and want to experience the same joy that you had in finding these things. So if you're going to eat, eat a mushroom that you 100% know what it is, that's a good idea if, if it's the first time that you just eat a small piece and save the rest in your fridge for maybe five days, just so that you know how your body will react. And also if you do get sick, that you can take that mushroom with you to the hospital and say, this is what I ate. And then they can help identify it and know what to do to help you. Um, but everyone can have a, their own idiosyncratic reaction to eating a mushroom. Just like if you've never eaten shrimp before, you might want to just eat one or two and see how you go. Because some people have allergic reactions to them. There are a lot of resources to help you identify mushrooms. Um, there's some more um, amateur friendly guidebooks out there that help people identify mushrooms that aren't quite so scientific. Finding a mushroom mentor like myself to, uh, in the region that you're planning to go foraging is a great idea and then also there are some really great mushroom ID Facebook groups. Uh, I remember the very first time I ever went into the forest to ID mushrooms. I took my guidebook and I walked a few feet into the forest and I saw a small brown mushroom and then I spent like a half an hour or more flipping through all the pages trying to figure out what it was and then I got frustrated and went home. And so my advice is when you're first starting out maybe just leave those, I call them LBMs, little brown mushrooms, just leave them alone. And if you're going to ID a mushroom, pick one that's, you know, has some interesting things to it, like purple color or bright yellow color, and is a bit larger in size, some distinctive shapes or features to it, and it'll be way easier to identify than just some very ordinary small brown mushroom. Um, and then my other tip would be, if you're going to eat a mushroom, is to also use more than one source to identify it. So it could be a mushroom mentor, it could be using a Google image search, and then finally like a reputable field guide. And so it's really help you narrow down what it is. And, and th the golden rule is if you have doubt, then throw it out.